Hello friends, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we'll be seeing the current affairs of 7 February 2019. We'll be seeing five articles with respect to prelims. The first article talks about the network booster, the new communication satellite released by ISRO. Second article talks about cabinet's approval for creating a new unified regulator for regulating IFSCs in our country. Third article talks about regulation of deposit schemes in our country. And fourth one is about a worrying approach which talks about Ayushman Bharat, the health scheme in our country. And the final article talks about the international organization called as Lima Group. The first article we'll be seeing is Network Booster. This article is about India's latest communication satellite that is GSAT-31. So this GSAT-31 is a communication satellite and this launch by ISRO was not made from Indian soil but it was made from the European rocket in French Guinea. The main aim of this communication satellite is to offer connectivity and this will provide connectivity services to ATMs and also ensures uninterrupted DTH services that is the television services and also offers uninterrupted DTH services. So uh, for the prelims we have to remember some facts about the satellite. So this GSAT-31 is 48th communicational satellite launched by ISRO. And this satellite has two KU band transponders which will help in tracking down the satellite signals for the communication and connectivity purposes. This will support VSAT network, television uplinks, cellular connectivity apart from ATMs and DTH services. The coverage of this satellite not just includes the mainland India but it also includes the islands that is Andaman Nicobar as well as Lakshadweep Island. So for the prelims, we have to know about the orbits and where the satellites are placed in which orbits. As we saw before, satellites can be broadly classified into two types. One is communication satellites like GSAT-31 we are currently seeing and second one is Earth observation satellites. The satellites which are used for surveillance purposes. So here the communication satellites are usually placed in an orbit called as a geostationary orbit. This geostationary orbit is a part of geosynchronous orbit and it is at an altitude of about 36,000 kilometers from Earth. And this satellite it has a footprint of about one third of Earth that is each satellite it covers one third of total surface area of Earth. So we have to have three geosynchronous or geostationary satellites in order to provide communication to whole of the surface area of the Earth. So the rotation of this satellite syncs with the revolution of Earth. So it takes a period of 24 hours to cover the Earth. However, the Earth observation satellites, they need to cover whole of the surface area of the Earth to provide surveillance services. So these are not placed in geostationary orbits, but they are placed in another orbit called as lower Earth orbit or polar orbit. This orbit is at lower level at about 160 to 2000 km from the surface of Earth. As against geostationary orbit, this polar orbit, the satellites revolve in north-south direction and it takes only 127 minutes to cover one full rotation around the Earth. There is also yet another orbit called as Middle Earth orbit. This Middle Earth orbit is at a range of 2000 km to 35,000 km. So usually in order to send the satellite to geosynchronous orbit, first the satellite is placed in low Earth orbit, then some thrusters are used to give enough force to put the satellite into geostationary orbit. The second article for the day is Cabinet approves unified regulator for IFSCs. IFSCs are nothing but international financial service centers. This article talks about regulation of international financial service centers in our country. So what are international financial service centers? For example, India has an IFSC called as Gujarat International Finance Technology City or the Gift City. So this gift city which was established a couple of years back is the first international financial service center in our country. So what, why was this established? It was established to provide a conductive environment for creating a multi-service SEZ and also exclusive domestic zone. So this such a unique niche hub, it provides high connectivity, transport facilities, facilities like power, water, technology, gas, etc. in order to easily conduct financial transactions within the country. Apart from improving the ease of doing business in the financial transactions, this global financial hub is also estimated to increase the direct job opportunities, provide world-class infrastructure 
and also it adheres to environmental norms thus preventing the climate change happening due to negative consequences of industrial development. Such international financial service centers which are operating in a country currently, they are regulated by multiple authorities. For example, RBI, Reserve Bank of India, SEBI Securities and Exchange Bureau of India and IRDAI, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. Because of presence of multiple organizations, there are various hurdles created which affects the ease of conducting the business. So, the cabinet has approved to create a unified authority in order to increase the ease of doing business with respect to financial service centers in our country. This will be done via creating a new act. So, the bill called as International Financial Services Center Authority Bill 2019 will be tabled in the parliament and it will be, it will aim to create and this will encourage the Indian companies to conduct business with foreign financial centers across the world such as London and Singapore thus making India a thus increasing the ease of doing business potential of India. This will also make India a global standard regulatory and business environment thus bringing in more services to our country. Third article for the day is unregulated deposit schemes to be banned. This is a recently cabinet approved measure and the article is taken from Hindu. So, the Union Cabinet on Wednesday it approved official amendments to the act called as Unregulated Deposit Schemes Bill 2018. So, according to this amendment, this will ban all the deposit schemes that are not registered with the government. It will not just create a ban but it also makes it an offence. We all know that there are many unregulated deposit schemes currently functioning in our country. The economic survey of 2016-17 first noticed that this unregulated deposit schemes and the very important point to note here is most of the people who are affected due to making unregulated deposits are poor and middle class people. So in order to avoid this situation, the budget of 2017, it proposed to bring in unregulated deposit schemes bill. So now the cabinet has approved the official amendments to the bill in accordance to the recommendations given by 48th Standing Committee on Finance. So according to these new amendments, this bill creates three dip different types of offences with respect to deposit schemes. First, running an unregulated deposit scheme is now an offence. Fraudulent default in unregulated de deposit schemes is also considered as offence. Wrongful indictment in relation to unregulated deposit schemes is also made as an offence and, and is completely banned now. Apart from banning, severe punishment and heavy fines are also levied on the people who are running such deposit schemes. The provision bans the deposit takers from promoting, operating as well as issuing advertisements uh, with respect to any unregulated scheme. The next article we'll be seeing is a worrying approach. This article talks about the scheme of Ayushman Bharat which is world's largest health insurance scheme. So this article which was taken from Hindu, it talks about Ayushman Bharat scheme. So before getting into the article, we have to know what is Ayushman Bharat scheme. So this Ayushman Bharat scheme is a health insurance scheme in our country which was introduced last year. The main aim of the scheme is to provide apart from primary, secondary as well as tertiary services tertiary medical services to all the citizens of our country. It also provides uh, health insurance cover to the economically backward class of people in our country. 5 lakh rupees economic cover is provided per family and almost 100 million families in our country will be benefited from this Ayushman Bharat scheme. The beneficiaries for the scheme will be selected as per socio-economic caste census of 2011. As it is a central sector scheme, the scheme will have 60% funding from the centre and the remaining 40% must be pooled in by the states. And one of the very important issues faced by Indian healthcare system is out-of-pocket expenditure. So, according to various government reports, 67% of total health expenditure in our country is due to out-of-pocket expenditure. Uh, out-of-pocket expenditure is expenditure which is not covered by any government sponsored or other insurance scheme. And people, especially in rural areas and the poor people, are pushed into a debt trap because of the increasing out-of-pocket expenditure in our country. The implementation of this uh, mission will be done at the national level by a specially created body called as Ayushman Bharat National Health Protection Mission Agency. 
in the state level the states are advised to implement it by creating a authority called as state health agency so this state health agency can be either created as a trust a society or a non for profit company with according to the wills of each and every state the states can also implement the scheme through insurance company directly or via any trust or society set up for this purpose however what is the problem here the problem is that we all know that health is a state subject the seventh schedule of indian constitution it divides different subjects into central subjects state subject as well as residuary subjects here health is a state subject which means that state has the authority to make any schemes with respect to the health subject however ayushman bharat is a central scheme and the financial devolution happens in 60 is to 40 ratio and the states gets the funds via financial commission recommendations in every budget here however though initially all the states of our country plan to implement this scheme west bengal telangana delhi and odisha are not joining the ayushman bharat scheme the sole question here is whether the scheme of ayushman bharat hurts cooperative federalism so cooperative federalism is one of the basic principles behind which indian democracy functions peacefully so affecting this poses a huge threat to indian democratic systems so according to this scheme national health agency it is mandated to provide standardized set of rules for the implementation of this ayushman bharat scheme however we should know that every state in our country is different and each and every states has localized issues and because of such a diversity generalizations is not completely possible and that is the reason why health has been kept in seventh schedule under the state bringing in such a state subject under center habit thus poses a serious threat to cooperative federalism and it also affects the efficiency in implementation of such schemes the final article talks about lima grouping this lima grouping is in news because of the current political crisis going on in the south american country of venezuela so upsc has the habit of asking about international financial bodies so apart from knowing a uh, famous international bodies like world bank imf or the united nations we also have to know about the new small bodies which are coming up in current affairs so this is lima group which was formed in the year 2017 and it is currently in news why it is in news because of the current political and economic emergency situation that is happening in south american country of venezuela so venezuela is located here so remembering map is also important for prelims So this Lima group is a multilateral body which was established on August 8 of 2017. So the main purpose of creating such a body is to bring out solution to the crisis going on in the country of Venezuela. There is not just political crisis but also economic crisis going on in that country. So this body has been created to assist United States in pressuring Venezuelan government towards conducting free and fair elections so that the political crisis comes to end. so we have to know about the 14 countries in the grouping so most of the countries in this grouping are south american countries but apart from south american countries like brazil paraguay argentina chile peru colombia some central american countries are also included for example costa rica panama guatemala are included other than this north american countries like mexico and canada also forms a part of this organization now the organization apart from concentrating on venezuelan crisis alone as i said before the main aim of the organization is to establish peaceful venezuelan government it concentrates in area of release of political prisoners in venezuela calls for free elections offers humanitarian aid to the people who are affected due to breakdown of democratic order in venezuela under bolivarian government thank you